We're talking about food now and specifically Chinese food, but not the way you might think being from um, British Columbia because we certainly have many Chinese food restaurants here. This one is Beyond the Great Wall, Recipes and Travels in the Other China. The authors are Jeffrey Alford and Naomi Do Good, and Jeffrey is here today. Thanks for coming in. This is the book, by the way. It's beautiful and got great pictures and some great recipes in it. But what is The Other China? The Other China. Yeah, the China is about 130 million people and uh, uh, who are not ethnically Chinese. Mm -hmm. so, they're not Han Chinese. And they're not Han Chinese mm -hmm. and they live in pretty much three-fifths of the land area of the country, but, uh, um, you know, one-tenth of the population. But among that 130 million people, like Tibetans or Mongolians or, you know, uh, there's more than like 50 different languages spoken among that. Um, this, and, but a lot of these populations, like, the Dong, you know, there's six million Dong, and people have never even heard of the Dong, you know, but right. these are big populations, uh, but they live in quite remote areas. So when we think of Chinese food and, you know, we're in yeah. Korea, this yeah. is totally no. different. No, no, some of it's, you know, because like Mongolian, you know, very important part of Chinese history, uh, has influenced, crossed in, influence, but uh, a lot of it is just completely different. More like what uh, uh, one of the big regions with a lot of tribal populations is a province yunnan province and that food is going to taste a lot more like thai food than it is china than we think of chinese food let's take a look at some of these uh let's just open it up here well rice i mean is obviously uh rice and noodles staple, you know, but it's a, grain i grain guess everything's diet. a little bit different here um it's a little complicated because it's combined, like in one place there will be tropical, you know, bananas and pineapples. Mm -hmm. and, and then in another place, for example, in Tibet, we have people living above 17,000 feet that never come below 17,000 right. feet. So, you know, these are very different. Uh, but the point for us in doing the book was to, uh, the, uh, we met actually in Tibet in 1985. You we, we, yeah, yeah. And so we've been going for a long time. Um, but we're also sort of, uh, it's a little bit politically motivated, the book. Yeah. Right. Because uh, a lot of these cultures are, th th because of what's happening in China today, they're to some extent being threatened by, uh, well, for example, Lhasa is now, uh, there's more Chinese right. than there are Tibetans. Exactly. In, in the, so the yeah. culture is being threatened. And, Both and cultures being threatened. Food, food as part, of, part of the culture. Yeah. So you want to, to preserve... We think of it like, yeah, like biodiversity. You know, we know that the planet's better the more of these things that we keep alive. Mm -hmm. Same way with cultural survival. Like the more the, the cultures able to maintain their existence is better for everyone. This is uh, well, you you and Naomi have written many um, many cookbooks, but like you said, this is the most. This is a political Outwardly book political, as, yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So you met a lot of people. How did you gather these recipes? I mean, you're going to places that. Most of us are never going to go there. Um, so it, it, sometimes it's relatively easy, like in Lhasa, where we've spent years and have friends and eat in people's houses, and this is relatively easy. But uh, uh, especially amongst the tribal populations, just getting there is hard. So, like for example, the honey, uh, these you know four and a half million honey. If anybody's been to Thailand, the Akka honey is the same as Akka. But just to get there it was three days by bus and then three days out. Right. And then in the market, they had phenomenal. Uh, piles of sprouts and I've never seen like these sprouts I don't and I, I know pretty well <laughs> <laughs> I thought the honey eat a lot of sprouts you know <laughs> it's up to the next person to find out more than that but so it really varies how much access we have and language is also um, we're always speaking in Mandarin so everyone's speaking in a second language right, right. Uh, down in some of these areas uh, I can speak Thai so I can I can be speaking in a native tongue so in some can, places for, for in many in uh, many parts that are featured in the book you're able to actually speak, speak in the, the first and, first yeah. yeah but sometimes Somewhat. it's you know like there's eight different language families right in this region so we're gonna see not just great uh, recipes and beautiful pictures but you learn a lot about parts of China that um, you likely had never heard of and and one here, it's just some of the most yeah. beautiful places in the world. Beautiful book. Congratulations Thanks. on it well, to you and Naomi. Thanks. And Jeffrey is uh, in Vancouver.